that work? Yeah. So, yeah, hi, I'm Yosha. Um, I am an independent creative technologist and I'm usually working um, on a tool called FrameTrail, which is used to <coughs> connect video with additional documents, so annotations at certain points of time that uh, yeah, show you additional information on what you're seeing. And more recently, uh, we started using this uh, to try and open up parliamentary debates. Um, and for that, I did work together with an entity in Germany called Parliament Watch or Abgeordneten Watch, um, which are yeah, that's a non-profit, and they basically um, try and uh, um, yeah hold the government accountable and provide information on additional income and everything about politicians. Um, so we thought we we're going to do this six-month project and try and. Uh, it's what it was called Parliament Go Watch Goes Video. So um, right now they're just working with uh, a lot of textual content, um, but nobody actually works with the video materials um, of the Parliament. Um, so the idea we had is that we make the parliamentary speeches more accessible and understandable in this interactive video format form using the frame trail uh, environment. I'm not going to talk about that now, but if you want to look that up, that's frametrail.org. Um, then, of course, also to motivate citizens to take part and, and critically, critically engage with political debates, um, because that's, uh, especially if we talk about video, that's often um, concentrated on, on uh, short, spectacular moments and not really um, on, on actual issues, um, let alone like an entire debate. Um, and, yeah, of course, in the end, to contribute to a more transparent parliament. Um, we did that by providing, on the one hand, an interactive transcript based on the plenary protocols that's available anyway, like the plenary proceedings, um, being, on the one hand, a transcript of the speech, but also all the additional, um, I just learned that's called heckling, um, like all these things that are happening um, in the parliament, um, which are not part of the actual speech. Um, then we are using that information to um, automatically link additional information uh, in the form of annotations to the video. So we have, at a certain point of time, a relevant uh, other document on the profiles of the person that's currently speaking. Uh, we have other information like uh, the wiki data or Wikipedia page on a certain law. Um, and potentially later we could also use this uh, to have a more curated form. So we have this auto automated uh, thing, but we can also um, use it to um, yeah, uh, do, do more detailed reports, uh, which are actually curated by people. And the one thing I really like is that uh, we have this, it's called Zwischenruf button in, in, in German, um, that we have like this uh, possibility for citizens to, to interject and um, ask a question directly to the speaker at a certain point of time, and they can actually answer um, in a very well moderated process, of course, and uh, not just forwarding the questions or insults. Um, so the problem is where do we get the data? Um, the Bundestag does provide something like an open data format, um, where they have all the protocols and transcripts of the speeches. Um, something like in the sense of they just invented their own format, um, which doesn't follow any standard whatsoever, um, with, with very, yeah, very, very funny um, node names and, and things. Um, but it's still usable a lot better than, than for example, PDF of the parliamentary proceedings. Um, so what we did was taking see that, but uh, taking from this open data API, uh, take the uh, MP core data, so, so all the information on the person and the plenary protocol, and then um, have a, it's actually the most complicated thing to try and find out which video is the right video file um, and audio file for that particular speech. But if we have that, there's some magic called Aeneas, which I guess uh, most of you know, uh, which is a forced alignment tool, completely open source, which works extremely well also with uh, lots of different languages. Um, 
So we're combining um, the parliamentary protocols with the uh, audio that we found out uh, is the correct one and then uh, try and match the timings um, via INES first alignment. Um, there's more to it, which I'm not going to talk about now because um, I want to have time to show what we actually did. Um, it's basically um, two uh, components being technologically very simple. One part is the analysis part where we take care of the indexation of uh, parliamentary protocols, the alignment process by basically just sending INES what it needs to, to do the first alignment um, in a certain process, um, and then also analyze the already, um, like when we have a time-based transcript anyway, um, then we can do all kinds of text mining, uh, finding out things in the text, and we automatically already have the timings. Um, so if we detect anything, we have the, the time-based uh, annotation. So how this works is really simple. Maybe I can even make it a bit bigger. Um, you really just drag and drop such an um, XML file um, of one parliamentary session into the thing and press the magic button and it does everything. Um, meaning it does the alignment, it uh, looks uh, for all the different features uh, of that session um, and uh, yeah, does the entire indexing, so there's not more to it than just uh, waiting for a long time. Um, and it does take a long time, like for the current election period, it uh, takes like uh, 7 to 10 hours, depending on the machine. Um, so what you have then is a purely file-based index of the entire um, proceedings that you put in there. Um, entirely files means just uh, like a JSON file with an index of all the speeches and then um, the um, additional files which uh, <coughs> contain the actual speeches with the uh, timings. Um, don't have to watch that till the end. Now the interesting thing is that Purely based, right now, purely based on these timings, um, we can build the uh, platform part, which basically takes that index, and because we have all the timings, all the transcripts, we can make them searchable and find out different words on, yeah, at particular times of time in the entire, like right now it's like 3,500 videos, uh, like, like 3,500 uh, speeches, and we can find out pretty much everything that's uh, somewhere in the transcripts and then watch the particular speech um, in the sense of uh, I click the phrase or sentence and jump directly into the video, into the speech at that point of time and can then in this user interface watch the speech in a time-based transcript based on the protocol and can have um, the just going to go back a second. Um, you have the profile of the politician that's currently speaking with the possibility to ask them uh, questions right from within that uh, user interface. Um, and one thing that's also very, that, that's just missing in, in the current implementation that the German parliament does, uh, them, yeah, that they do themselves, is information on what are we actually talking about or what's actually discussed. So the actual laws or proposals or documents uh, that are relevant uh, for that very speech or the entire agenda item in that case. Um, both of these things are in solid open source and already on GitHub. The next steps we have to do, um, right now that's, as I said, like technically very simple and entirely file-based. Um, we need to integrate that in their existing platform, add all the speeches to into the MP profiles and, and um, yeah, um, their search index. The other thing is that um, having a file-based search index with uh, several thousand speeches is of course not really performance, so we're uh, going to in index that uh, again using Solar and Elasticsearch. We need to optimize the workflow, um, like it's pretty hard with parliamentary speeches, there's a lot of things for example, in Germany, politicians have these stenographs that try to really capture what's being said 
and um, then afterwards uh, politicians have like two hours after the session to correct what they said uh, so they want to make themselves sound more eloquent or whatever um, and that makes it really hard to, to actually force align the uh, transcript with the um, we are with what they actually said um, <laughs> And yeah, some SEO and PR magic, and then we're gonna launch it just as is to, to get it out there as soon as possible. There are many interesting speeches happening right now um, in the German parliament, and like we're every day we're seeing the stuff coming in. When can we finally uh, launch the thing? So yeah, we're gonna launch it as soon as we can, um, even if it's not entirely finished. But the other thing is that this realm of video recordings plus transcript structured in a hierarchy of electoral periods, sessions, agenda items, speeches, that of course doesn't just apply to the German parliament. Um, so what we're currently doing is trying to identify and contact stakeholders who are interested in applying what we did there in other formats of parliaments, so which can be like can range from city councils up to, to EU parliament. Um, because it's basically all the same. They all have video recordings, they have the parliamentary proceedings or, or protocols, um, and they have this hierarchy of uh, electoral period, sessions, agenda, items, speeches. So it should be pretty easy to build something that's interoperable and works for all these different parliaments um, and is made of, of yeah, small open source uh, components. Um, the idea right now is to try and get everyone on the table who's interested and um, try and draft something like a collaborative project proposal. And then um, in at Mozilla Festival in October, we're gonna have a session and try to get together in person and uh, to form kind of a mini first consortium um, of people who wanna do this, who wanna do this in their parliaments. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the that's the plan. So if you want to learn more um, about Frank Trail, about the Open Parliament video stuff, um, here are the links. I guess the slides are sent around anyway. Um, you can follow um, me on Twitter or contact me anytime if you have any questions. And of course, we're gonna, we want to bring this to the UK Parliament. Um, so yeah, just get in touch, please. Ooh, um, I'm not sure, like, um, I don't think I ever saw it from that perspective. I always saw, like, the citizen that <laughs> can then uh, use that to, like, share short snippets and, and to, to hold, also hold people accountable for, for what they're saying. Um, I guess it would change the way, like, like right now, nobody's watching these debates. That's just not very interesting if you have an entire speech. Like, there are these spectacular moments. That's what I said at the beginning. Like, that's what's shared, but that's not very often based on an actual problem. But that's more, I don't know, someone that's dressed funny or is very loud or yeah, it's just the spectacular part of politics, and um, the entire rest is not interesting. So. Just hope that's going to make people more interested in what they're actually saying, um, and then also hold them accountable to what they're saying. So, yeah. Okay, I can maybe drop it out. Um, did you already think of um, translating? Because, um, I mean, who's interested in the German talks? Um, makes total sense. There's a very nice project, uh, it was called Dillipad, um, where uh, research uh, 
um, like from several universities, but led by Amsterdam University, tried to work with the parliamentary records of um, the Canadian Parliament, I think the French Parliament, definitely um, Netherlands, um, Denmark, um, not Germany, um, and trying to like build an interoperable format that, that can capture all these different parliamentary proceedings with also the aim to translate it into different languages. And right now, uh, we're talking with them to try and do the exact same thing, but with video. Um, so yeah, it makes absolute sense to translate that. Not just, like, also from an accessibility perspective, um, it makes absolute sense, yes. Second, what about summarizing? Because who's interested and can read all this long stuff? That's something, like right now, as I said, that's technological, that's really, really simple. Um, so we're not doing like any actual text mining, like entity recognition, whatever things, but we just take a transcript, we take, we take a video, and we're presenting it in a nice user interface and make it searchable. Um, but of course, um, there are work packages we have to think of for future funding, and this is <coughs> those uh, packages, yeah. I'm uh, trying to find the archive on the website of these videos. You may have gone over that already, but Sorry, uh, trying to find the, the archive videos on your website. The archive videos of the um, sort of site? Yeah, I don't know if that's a... Um, yes, like they do have their own media library. Um, okay. It's like Bundestag slash uh, Mediatek. Um, so that is there. Um, but it's not very good, and we're, yeah. But then that's where you also find the videos, um, and as long as they don't change the way they work, we can just grab the videos from, from them directly. Okay, so they're not available at the moment? They are, they are okay. available. Um, we're not, like, legally sure if we can just take it all the way we just, we just did it, and we also, we also we like, we're talking with the one second administration and not just uh, taking everything from them. Um, but the thing is, like, before we launch, we still have to, um, like, technically, I think you have to check a box and say you're only using this for these and these purposes and, and all that. And we found a way just to bot download everything they have. Um, and that's, of course, not their plan. So, yeah, we're going to see. Yeah. 